Can you pass a test? Now, when we were kids, when we used to go to school, we used to have tests and those tests were temporary because even if you passed or not, it was temporary. And as college students or adults, you still had exams and tests. But how did we pass those exams and tests? By studying, by knowledge, by learning, studying the phrases, the words, the teachings. In the same way, in today's life, in every Christian life, there will be tests, trials, and tribulations. That's what the Word of God teaches us. And in today's video, I want to share with you something um, related to passing your test from this amazing book called Bible in 52 Weeks. So are you ready? Let's get started. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for watching. My name is Ragini. I do upload faith-based videos twice a week. If you're one of those who loves hearing the word of God, please support this channel by subscribing, commenting, liking, and sharing. Once again, in today's video, I'm sharing from this amazing book. And if you want to know everything about this book, I'll link it down below the book review for this specific book. So make sure you check it out. So I'm going to read first and then we can discuss. So the reading for today is from the book of Luke chapter 1 to 4. The Bible tells us of Jesus being tested before he began his ministry on earth. Our Lord Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. We read that from the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 2. Notice that first line about returning from the Jordan full of the Holy Spirit. Remember, he had just been baptized by John the Baptist. A dove descended upon him. And God himself spoke and said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. No sooner did Jesus get this confirmation from on high than he was sent to the wilderness and put to the test. God himself was put to the test. These are our lessons. In the wilderness, Satan quoted scripture out of context. Anybody who quotes scripture out of context or twisting the word of God is not from God. Maybe by mistake I have done or you have done. And if it's a mistake, we can always repent. But things like love is love and God is love so we can live the way we want. That is totally out of context because at the same time, the same God who loves us, he is also just and righteous. And he also spoke about hell. He also spoke about tribulation, not only about the good things which we want to hear. Right. That's why always I say this. You read the Bible in its context. So over here it says, In the wilderness, Satan quoted scripture out of context, tried to get Jesus to go against the will of God. He came at Jesus at a time when his spirit was strong, but his body was weak. He was hungry, so Satan tried to appeal to his flesh. Satan does the same thing to us. He comes in times of blessing and of drought. He comes against the strong as well as the weak. He doesn't care if you're sick, tired, overworked, or dealing with pressures at home. He will use every opportunity or circumstance to work his plan. He did the same thing to our Lord Jesus because he knew that our Lord is in the wilderness for 40 days, so tired, so hungry. His body was weak and he, he does the same tricks with us. Our body our physical body is lazy, doesn't want to read the Bible, but our spirit is willing. And the enemy knows our weaknesses and he tries to distract us and tempt us and do everything that's against God's will. The higher we go, the greater the test will be. That's why the word of God says, to the one more is given, more is required. You will be tested in your ways. You will be tested in ways you have never been tested before. The test might come in your marriage when your husband has been laid off from his job and you're solely responsible for the bills. The test might come in your body when the doctor says you have cancer. But the good news is that we are not in this thing by ourselves. One way to be assured of that is to make sure God's word is within us. That's the Holy Bible, the scriptures. That's how Jesus passed his test. Each time Satan came at Jesus with the temptation, Jesus came back at him with the word. He said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And we read that scripture from the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. The word is our armor and our weapon according to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 where Apostle Paul talks everything about spiritual warfare and he uh, takes the metaphoric example of the soldiers of those times like the Roman soldiers how they used each and every item or weapon before they went to war and Apostle Paul explains these items or weapons in spiritual way the soldiers used the big sword to fight in the world our sword as Christians is the word of God it's the scriptures and that's how our Lord Jesus fought with the devil not with any physical knife or sword or guns or anything but simply with the word he said it is written that a man should not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god amen hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word is living and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword jesus used it to defeat satan and we have to be able to do the same the word of god is the greatest tool needed in order to pass our tests of life. If it worked for Jesus, it can work for us. And when you read the Bible, you will understand what the word is. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And when you read further, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's our Lord Jesus. So the word itself is Christ himself speaking to us. Now you might get so many complaints from people there are so many bibles so many translations it's just a book written by men i've heard all those things which i myself questioned before too but to know our lord to know his character nowhere else we can go but to himself first prayer asking him to reveal himself to us and then also by reading his word and he has his own ways of using his holy spirit to show us the truth and my prayer today is the same for you especially if you haven't put your faith yet in our lord jesus there is nothing that we can do there is nothing or there's no way we can earn salvation on our own but simply by repenting and believing in who jesus is and what he did on the cross for us the gospel of our salvation i also want to share with you these three questions and feel free to comment down below it says points to ponder what tests have you encountered lately did you pass or fail your test? How did you do it? What advice would you give someone going through a test? The advice I would give is, of course, seek God, pray. And the best way is to pray through his own promises by reading his word and applying it in our life. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you because he's our guide, comforter and our teacher. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch your hearts and your lives and help you through whatever you're going through whatever test you're going through whether it's a family member whether it's yourself whether it's sickness anything our god is faithful and true trust in the lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding amen all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope this was encouraging i'll see you all in my next one until then you guys take care god bless you all and always stay rooted in christ